fathers. And Harrison cannot retain, yes he can, retain control for the touchdown. And sons. You're not going to win one-on-ones against Marvin Harrison. Making it to the NFL is already an impressive feat on its own, but to also have your own child find his way to the league as well is legendary status. There have been roughly 300 father-son combos to both play at least one snap in the NFL. In 2024, I found six more father-son duos that will be added to this list. So let's go ahead and dive on in. Marvin Harrison Jr. is listed at just under 6 foot 4 and 209 pounds, which is about 4 inches taller and 20 pounds heavier than his dad when he played. Skill set wise, Harrison Jr. has an advantage over his dad for high pointing a ball and fighting off defenders due to his size. Go toward Harrison, he turns, makes the catch! But on the flip side, is not quite as crisp a route runner as his dad. In college, Harrison Jr. played at Ohio State and was a two-time unanimous All-American in his final two seasons. His father was a beast in college as well, earning first-team All-American honors at Syracuse in 1995. Ultimately, as players, even though they have similar strengths within their game, they are different. And Harrison Jr. compares closer to seven-time Pro Bowler A.J. Green, both having that blend of size, fluidity, and hands. Here's how I would describe Marvin Harrison Sr. Along with the crisp route running and excelling at the catch point, the biggest advantage that Harrison Sr. had was his impeccable body control. He was great at avoiding big hits, thus prolonging his career and allowing him the success he had. He currently sits fifth all-time in career receiving touchdowns. Honestly, this man was a dream player for Peyton Manning. My very first pass, I threw a five-yard touchdown pass, and Marvin Harrison ran 48 yards for a touchdown. I was, remember thinking, this NFL is easy. You just throw a short pass to Marvin Harrison, and he runs for touchdowns. At six foot 185, Harrison was described as the anti-Terrell Owens by the New York Times. In an era of the diva wide receiver, Harrison was quiet, reserved, and simply did his job. And comparing to his son, there is some correlation with the whole anti-diva thing and the high-end work ethic. The biggest difference is Harrison Sr. was more reserved, whereas Harrison Jr. has a little more swagger. What do you believe your ceiling is? Um, my goal is to be the best receiver to ever play. Harrison Sr. was selected 19th overall back in 1996, and his son will almost certainly be a top 10, maybe even top 5 pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. Now before we continue, this video is sponsored by SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. And even though football season is over, there are more than 70,000 events every single day available on SeatGeek which includes concerts, other sports, festivals, and more. To pass the time to next football season, why not go out and do something fun? I plan on getting out and going to a few concerts throughout the summer. Plus, it's so easy using the SeatGeek app. They put all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure that you are getting a good deal. Every ticket is rated on a scale from one to 10. So look for the green dots. Green means good and red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And I got you guys. Use my code KTO for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code KTO. Make sure to click the link in the description to download the app. Moving on to our second father-son combo, we have Frank Gore Sr. and Frank Gore Jr. Frank Jr. is listed by NFL.com at 5'8 and 201 pounds. His dad is slightly taller at 5'9 and was bigger when he played by around 10 to 15 more pounds. Frank Jr. is not overly explosive and he is definitely smaller than his dad, but he does display some of the same balance, coordination, shiftiness, and break tackle ability that made his dad so dependable. He plays with that power back mentality. First look at Frank Gore Jr. lowering the shoulder. But Frank Gore Jr. won't be able to shoulder the full load in the NFL like his dad did just because of his size. In college, Frank Gore Jr. was Southern Miss's workhorse back, earning first team all Sun Belt honors in 2022 and second team in 2023. Frank Sr. played a role as a freshman on the 2001 National Championship Hurricane team. And although he did have success at Miami, it was hampered by tearing both of his ACLs at different points during his college career. Frank Sr. ended up being selected in the third round and was initially thought of as an injury prone player. But 16 seasons later, this guy became known as a true NFL Ironman, 
setting the all-time record for most games played by any running back in league history. With his lower center of gravity, Frank Sr. had incredible balance, ability to break tackles, and dependability. He was known as the inconvenient truth, but the inconvenient truth for his son is that he projects to the NFL as an average backup or special teamer, perhaps as a late round pick or undrafted free agent. Next up, we have some behemoths on the offensive line, John Alt and his son, Joe. Joe Alt stands at a monstrous six foot nine and 321 pounds, just slightly outdoing his father, who is six foot eight and played around 298 pounds. Interestingly enough, John has another son, Mark, who is much smaller in comparison, at only six foot four and 200 pounds. He was a hockey player and was drafted into the NHL back in 2010. John Alt back in the day was a tight end at Iowa, but later put on 40 pounds and transitioned to offensive tackle. Nicknamed the Monumental Minnesotan, John was able to maintain his athleticism while building the strength and technique to be a dominant left tackle. This led him to being the second tackle selected in 1984, 21st overall by the Chiefs. Eventually, John developed into a cornerstone left tackle for the Chiefs, and this is how he was described by his Hall of Fame teammate, Derek Thomas. Quote, in eight seasons, I've faced almost every tackle in the National Football League, and I've beaten them all. But in eight years of practice and scrimmage, I can only remember beating John Alt once. I think that is the highest compliment I can pay John. Also, here's a random fun fact. John Alt was the strongest lineman on Tecmo Super Bowl, so that's pretty cool. Anyways, now imagine if John Alt was a little bigger and more athletic and had a dad who knew exactly how to coach him from a young age to make him more refined and prepared. Because that's Joe Alt. Initially, he was a tight end before switching to O-line. Even after committing to Notre Dame, Joe and his dad would watch film together. And by his sophomore year, Joe was one of the best tackles in the country. Throughout his time with the Irish, the hype train continued to grow. And now, Joe Alt is seen as a generational prospect and a top 10 pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. Guys who are 6'9", 320, have dialed in technique, great athleticism, great strength, and solid work ethic, don't just come around all that often. Joe Alt sounds like his dad, but with the proper guidance from an even younger age to become a beast. And it showed. In a league desperate for better tackle play, somebody will be clamoring to get this guy. Now, let's move to the other side of the line. Chris Jenkins Jr. comes in at just under 6'3 and one biscuit shy of 300 pounds, which is still noticeably smaller than his father, Chris Sr., who stands at a massive 6'5 and played somewhere in the ballpark of 320 to possibly even 360 pounds. Also, Chris Sr.'s brother, Colin Jenkins, also played in the NFL. He played around 6'2 and 305 pounds. Skill set wise, there is some similarities between father and son, considering they did the dirty work on the inside of the line and stuff the run. Chris Jr., who goes just by Chris Jenkins, but I'll keep referring to him as Jr. just to keep things simple, has been described as an athletic, smart, versatile, and tough interior defender. At Michigan, he did the dirty work inside and did it well anchoring that dominant defense on their way to a national championship. This last year, he earned second-team All-American honors, compared to his dad, who played at Maryland and earned second-team All-ACC honors as a senior. Chris Jr. actually compares closer to his uncle, Cullen, who was around the same size and had success as a starting-level player in the league for 13 years. Here's how his dad was described as a player. According to the Washington Post, then Eagles coach Andy Reid said, quote, you're talking about a big, explosive, strong guy, so he'll be a handful. Chris Sr. was a second round pick to the Panthers back in 2001 and had a highly productive career, playing 10 seasons with four Pro Bowls and two first team All Pros to his name. He was also cut from that old school cloth, mean, outspoken, and just about the last guy you'd want to mess with. Get your ass out! Get what? What? That's my shit! My also, this may be the coolest video I could find involving this man, and that was when he went up against the host of Sports Science. Now, comparing his son Chris Jr., I don't think he's as vicious as his dad was. At what age did you realize that if you had to, you could take dad? That has not happened yet. <laughs> Overall, Chris Jenkins Jr. projects well going into the draft, 
He's seen as a top five or six defensive tackle in the class and should be selected somewhere in the second to third round range. Staying on the defensive side, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is a linebacker that comes in at 6 feet and 230 pounds, which is significantly smaller than his dad, who's 6 foot 1 and played at 262 pounds. Trotter Sr. was known as the Axe Man, doing the axe swinging celebration after big plays, which his son did as well. Trotter Sr. was also one of those tough, old school, big run stuffing linebackers of the early 2000s. The physical and aggressive style, combined with his instincts to find the ball carrier, were key reasons as to his success in the pros. In 11 seasons, Trotter Sr. was a four-time Pro Bowler and one of the most notable linebackers of the 2000s. Comparing his son's play style, Trotter Jr. described himself as a quote, old school linebacker in a new age body. Travis wrapped up and spun down by Jeremiah Trotter. Trotter always admired the way his dad played, which became a staple of the way he played growing up. What's the biggest thing you learned from dad? How to play linebacker, middle linebacker, uh, you know, just how to be physical, uh, how to play the game the right way. He was described by NFL.com's Daniel Jeremiah as the following, quote, his game is more about instincts, which obviously are very crucial and very important at the linebacker spot. He is a little bit undersized. He has really good eyes. He sifts and sorts and he will fill and be physical. Although there are similarities to his father, Trotter Jr. compares more to Nick Bolton, the Chiefs' undersized starting linebacker who's played a pivotal role over the last three seasons. He's the kind of prospect that if he were bigger, he would be a first round pick, but due to his size, he will most likely fall to a later round. He might even end up being selected near where his dad was. Now, as you've seen, most of these dads were total beasts in their day but no son will have a tougher legacy to live up to than Brendan Rice, the son of Jerry Rice. Well, he always says, yeah, you got a last name, so you got a target on your back. So make sure you stay in the moment, don't make the moment too big, and don't overthink and you'll be just fine. At six foot two and around 210, Brendan is just slightly bulkier than his dad, who played at just around 200 pounds. At the NFL Combine, Brendan put up a 4540 and his dad back in the day ran somewhere in the ballpark of a 46 or 47. Although they didn't train the same way they do today. And everyone agrees that Jerry's game speed was much faster than that. As far as playstyles go, Brendan is a stronger and more powerful player than his dad was. But raw power doesn't determine how good a player is in the NFL. Jerry Rice was known for his exceptional work ethic, discipline, attention to detail, and dedication to his craft. According to a Redditor, he had the best hands of all time, the best route running of all time, and the best run after catch of all time. Pretty much every attribute you could have as a receiver, he was a 10 out of 10. He was so dedicated that the day after winning the Super Bowl, Rice was seen all alone running routes on the practice field. You gotta be obsessed and a little psychotic to play at the level Rice did for as long as he did. 21 NFL seasons, 13 Pro Bowls, 10 All Pros, 3 Super Bowl rings, and the honor as the greatest receiver of all time, with career numbers that seem unbreakable. Bill Walsh once described Rice as, quote, a swift, smooth player who's got great instincts running with the ball, going to the ball, and catching in a crowd. His son Brendan's scouting report looks a bit different. Same effort, Ooh, and this time, it. it's Brendan Rice for the mm. touchdown. This is according to Lance Zerline over on NFL.com. Brendan Rice is big and physical, lacks sudden feet, and might have a hard time separating on short routes, is a deep ball threat with quick, strong hands, and his comp isn't his dad, rather Nick Westbrook Ickhine, who's been a third to fourth option type player in Tennessee. While his dad was a first rounder back in his day, Brendan is seen roughly as the 18th best receiver of the class, projecting as a backup who could work his way into some reps over time. And I'm sure, even as an NFL player, his dad will be there to push him to be his best. That's that, that's strong hands right no, there. No, no, that's, that's an incredible yeah, yeah, break. But he got to drag that, that, that back, back foot. foot. Yeah. <laughs> is trailing him. And they're going to go his way. And oh, he got it. The record. He did it. Oh, and it was Lewis with the coverage, but Jerry Rice is just unstoppable.